Hello, Minister. Thank you for doing this interview to PAL News. Um, I, re I um, heard your, you talk on the um, convention, and um, it's done to me, or I'm not sure. Is it the first time you visit Europe to do this kind of um, campaign to, to reach out to the Europeans? It's now my second time that I came for the similar okay. um, engagement with the European Union Parliament. And is it exclusively to the European Union, or do you also visit um, Belgian Parliament or Belgian politicians, French, German? Yeah, for instance, like uh, tomorrow I will have um, engagement with uh, some members of government of um, Belgium as an individual uh, state. Okay, and um, f for the moment, have the um, the reply been or the response been positive or negative or neutral, or how does it feel to you? It was positive. Positive. Uh, I've been really. I they could understand they. Even last time when I was, I was here, and that is prior to uh, CITES parties, the convention of the parties, that is the uh, 18th convention of the parties, um, and they understood well. And I think um, because of changing of uh, members of parliament sometimes, and the changing of views, uh, sometimes members, they might not understand those who are now in the Parliament and they overwhelmed. They can be overwhelmed by other views, uh, but we put across our narratives, and that narrative we speak on behalf as a minister. I came here, and I I I speak on issues that are pertinent to Africa, especially Sadak, Southern African region, where we have more wild animals and. Uh, these wild animals are more close to the communities. The communities there they live side by side with these wild animals. I, I speak more of that, particularly Southern Africa, where I know issues that are with concern concerning the wild animals. And did you also speak to the environmentalists and the green movement in Europe? Um, not yet. I just came for for four days. Then they are your biggest uh, opponents, probably. Yeah, I think they do that. Some of these. Um, it's a pity that uh, we sometimes, um, as human beings, we are not honest to ourselves. And at the end of the day, because of fun money, we end up being detrimental to even our own, uh, you know, un universal um, well-being. Uh, for instance, um, and I, I invited some of these NGOs to come in Namibia and talk to the communities, and they feel how the communities. Um, understand and the views um, about wildlife conservation and also vis-a-vis -vis hunting vis-a-vis -vis livelihood because some people think hunting um, the livelihood uh, they put it that way that hunting has nothing to do with livelihoods of those communities while we say in Africa hunting cannot be it's just consumptive or non-consumptive um, um, wildlife um, utilization is part of our conservation. For this Namibian model, we put it that way, and it, 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 it's in the law that both non consumptive and consumptive use of wildlife sustainably is part of wildlife. That's why we have um, thriving wildlife population in the, in the country, and uh, most of our species are really thriving and I mean, thriving and we do not even know what to do with them. Like for instance the case of elephants. They, they, they become nuisance now. They become we do not know what to do with them. Communities are complaining that please they become too much. Give more trophy text to this and I said no we if we start doing that, we target because our law does not allow trophy for um to to, have, to give a tech to a female elephant or sub adult so we target more you know animals males that are over reproductive age that are about to die that they become also sometimes um, problematic to the to the, the family because a rhino for instance especially black rhino when he is about to die when he's um, old the same applies to a lion because they become paranoid, they start killing the cat. They start killing the babies and the and the females because 
they feel that now they will be isolated. Of course, that is the way, that's the trend, that once he's old, he's outcasted, and the young ones, will, female, will chase him out. So they become paranoid. They start now already killing them. So while they're babies. So we in order it's conservation management part and and then the application of science. We will have to take to put a take on that. That means even if you do not do hunting, trophy hunting, you have to destroy it because in order to to, to protect the, the rest of the family. So this is Science people do not understand because they don't go there and ask why do you have to put a tag on an animal for hunting? It in fact in our case it's because of that because we have a abundance of wild animals and then how to do it we are informed by science um, and the principle sustainability for us is to say communities they have to get benefits, they have to drive benefit from this wild animal. And now, if you have animals that have to, you have to put it down, you have to destroy that animal. So why, instead of just destroying that animal and give me a gift needs to the community, put a tag on it, and then, for instance, for elephant or a lion, or a rhino, for instance, they say, look, this rhino, the tag is 250,000 US dollar. Now, this, animal, this money will flow back into conservation. This community will be able to pay the game cards. They will be able to flow back in the inner community projects, like provision of water in that community, electricity, scholarship for students. It is something that, rather than just destroying it and say, look, because you have to destroy it. You have to kill that animal because it will be a danger dangerous to the rest of the family. So this is science that many people who don't live with animals, they don't understand. And that is what we come to preach here, that here is not theory. Theory doesn't work in conservation of wild animals. When you say, look, for instance, those who think, let's give you money. And the communities, if they used to get two million US dollar from wild animal, uh, you know, for hunting. Let's let double it and make it four million. Now, practically, what it means is that you end up this community now thinking that there's no value in these animals. You know, a human being is incentive based. Whenever you want a human being to do something, they must he must see tangible income from that source. Now, if there's nothing comes from that source, there's no value on that animal. There's no value on the animals anymore. So you give, then then it becomes a handout, and a handout is dangerous in the world. We don't want people to base on. They must to have their income based on handout. They must manage their own animals, these wild animals, and then derive benefit from there. And then they will now know that these animals, even if they give problems to us. Even if they destroy our properties, there's income from there. We can sacrifice land use, some form of land use. Our crop farming, because we cannot do both, crop farming and any help, wild animals. But yet, we get something from there. So we, we have a, or to offset some of the losses and mitigate human wildlife conflict. So that is the thing. And it's very, very simple to understand if you, if people want to understand it. But I, it's a pity for these organizations who are lined up, lobbed, and financed by those who are against conservation. In fact, these people are against conservation who are doing all these things. And I, that's why my appeal is we need to understand how these communities, I'm not talking about how the government feels, but how community feels. And for us, we speak on behalf of them, of these communities, because they are not state you know, role players. They are they as communities. And the elected government had to talk about this, that these communities, that's how they feel. Let us listen, these communities, and they go even there. 
and talk to them, understand practically, and see the wild animals, and they will understand it. Okay, I hope the people who will follow us will understand it too. Thank you very much for this interview, and good luck tomorrow with the Belgian government. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome.